So one question that comes to my mind is, why was the date moved up from the 1st to the 20th? Like, how does the funding procedure get affected through that? So the federal uh, regulations state that the, gov the uh, USDA can fund food stamps for a month after a shutdown. Mm -hmm. So that has been traditionally interpreted as the month after the shutdown, which in this case was the January 1st benefit. Mm -hmm. So by distributing February benefits, before the 20th, we're still in that one month window, which allows us to get most of the federal benefit out the door during that funding. Um, the USDA will then start using their contingency funding to allow us to continue to process recertifications and new, ap and new applications, um, but that funding is limited and that would be the end of the food stamp allocation until there's a budget passed. And, P and recipients will be receiving the full benefit? The full benefit. So potentially January 20th could be the last benefit they receive if this continues? It depends um, how, much, how long the contingency goes for, but we know based on some of the news that came out that the feds don't have a full month of benefits set aside. So certainly, depending on how much of the benefit goes out across the country early, it's, it's $5 billion in benefits a month across the country. So depending on how much of that goes out before the 20th and how long the contingency lasts, I think it's clear to say that the March benefit distribution will be at risk. Um, and we are grateful to know that we will be able to continue to process new applications into February, but we will certainly be nervous about March. Do you have a time? I mean, is is there a timeline where you would know that the March benefits were truly in jeopardy, or is it like if the budget passes, if it's funded the next day, they can make this all happen and get the money to the state? Yeah, they can. As soon as the budget passes, all our fears go away. They're able. To, the money actually flows directly from the federal government to the company that administers the benefit. It doesn't actually come to states. So as soon as there is a budget passed, they will be able to distribute the benefits. And I think, um, you know, I don't want to speak for USDA, but my interpretation of what they're doing is they'll be monitoring how much of the contingency funds is used through the month of February, and that will tell them where they are for my for March. They certainly will not have a full month of March benefits to distribute across the country. What kind of questions are you hearing from the customers here? Are you hearing from people who are scared or are they pretty confident about all of their benefits? I've heard from staff that we've had people coming into the offices and calling the call center to ask about their benefits. The USDA did put out a press release last week that really said February benefits were preserved and so I think that went a long way but there were some outstanding questions uh, throughout the week that we wanted to really get clarity on so that we weren't misleading the public. I think a lot of people don't understand that this uh, critical benefit would be held up in the shutdown because so much of the federal government has been preserved um, that I think there's a lack of awareness more broadly in the public that food stamps are affected so directly. Any other benefits or programs that are affected in addition to SNAP? Certainly. So I think um, a lot of our other programs, the guidance that we have, also shows us that March would be where they would come at risk. So um, most critical to us at DHS are cash assistance and child care subsidies. Those, it, we project that we have enough funding to run those programs through the end of February, uh, but would certainly be at risk for March if the shutdown continues. And how many Rhode Islanders are affected by SNAP? Or uh, by SNAP, it's a hundred. Uh, uh, it's a hundred and fifty thousand Rhode Islanders, ninety-three thousand households, and child care and TANF um, cash assistance are about ten thousand each. But SNAP is the largest of the safety net programs. Can you talk about? You mentioned it, uh, but just the budgeting for an extra week and a half, two weeks with the month right. of benefits. Can you talk about that and if that has caused any extra conversations with like food banks or different assistance agencies um, moving forward, yeah. getting to the end of February? Sure. So we are, this week we're really focused on getting the word out because we don't want people to get an early issuance in January and assume that they're going to get another one in a week. Uh, so our first priority is to ensure that Rhode Islanders understand that they need to budget that money. I am meeting with Andrew Schiff, uh, the CEO of the Food Bank, tomorrow to talk about contingency planning more broadly because should this continue, I think the state is going to have to rely on our network of food pantries heavily and I want to ensure that 
uh, they have a strong foundation to move from. Um, but the best thing we can do is ensure that Rhode Islanders know they are getting their full benefit amount. So in theory, nothing should change for them as long as they, you know, would budget it as they would their typical benefit. Well, you don't hold up anything to the first by giving it so quick. We they want to spend the money. We can't. <laughs> So the only way to get the money out the door is to administer it before January 20th. Well, if but we got to be ready because if, people want to be asking for food I know, at the middle of February. If we don't give it out before January 20th, we can't. We lose the money. That's right. Use it or lose it. That's right. How frustrating is this? We finally seem to have recovered from the computer problems that you hit, and now we've got this thrown in our lap. Yeah, I think, you know, we have been focused on access so much over the past year and we most recently achieved a timeliness benchmark that is one of the best in the country so um, I'm, I'm grateful that we're be able to be responsive our ability to get the money out the door early is not a small feat um, and the combined DHS and Deloitte teams have worked really hard over the past week to ensure that we can do that um, so I'm glad that you know we've progressed enough to be able to comply with this request of the federal government but certainly we've seen what the impact is on customers when they can't get their benefits and now to have something that's out of our control uh, affected is, is both scary and frustrating. So what recommendations do you have for people out there now? So certainly um, you know the question about budgeting is the first thing I want to make sure people understand they're going to get their money early and that there will not be another distribution um, until March um, assuming that the government comes back. I think I would ask Rhode Islanders to advocate uh, to the federal government. You know, certainly our legislators have been doing what they can, but to ensure that folks understand that this shutdown is putting this critical program and others at risk, um, and that we need the president to end the shutdown. And uh, the more I think citizens of the United States can emphasize that, the better. Um, and then the third thing I would say is that. You know, certainly it reminds us that the contingency for our safety net in this state is our food bank and food pantry programs. And so where Rhode Islanders want to help and have an opportunity to help, I always encourage people to ensure that those local organizations and, of course, the Rhode Island Food Bank has the resources that they need so that in a crisis we can call on them to help us. And is DHS doing anything to beef up support for food pantries in so we'll be in conversation as we look at, you know, this is so unprecedented that uh, un we are in conversations now to think about what those contingencies might need to be, and uh, certainly that's the reason for my meeting with Andrew tomorrow, to, to think about what he would need to be able to step in and, and support our residents in, in the event that this continues.